Hey, this is Mercedes with Frameless Media, and tonight we're discussing Dangerous Liaisons, Season 1, Episode 6, You Are Not My Equal. Now, um, if you haven't seen this latest episode, make sure you guys go and check it out um, because there are spoilers in this review. So if you guys are okay with that, let's begin. Now, we pick up from the last episode where um, pretty much the marquee calls off the engagement. Um, he is no longer interested in marrying Christine's daughter, Emily, because of news of Christine's indiscretions. Uh, pretty much Christine um, had a letter, uh, basically a love letter, where she was describing her feelings for the queen. And that's a no-no because Christine is married. <laughs> so um, the Marquis pretty much called off the engagement. And that's how the last episode ended. So it pretty much opens up to the aftermath of the broken engagement. So everyone's back at home and Camille is now learning that the Marquis is having cold feet. If you guys remember the Marquis and Camille made an agreement to marry, but after much thought, the Marquis is starting to realize that Camille is uh, pretty much like every other woman. Like why you're only marrying me for money, uh, to have status, to have a title. You're not in love with me. You know, you're, you're only wanting me for something, you know, something for nothing, basically. And so that now brings another obstacle for Camille to overcome. So if you guys recall, there's two obstacles that Camille has to deal with. She is still trying to seek revenge on Jacqueline. And now her latest obstacle is to now try to persuade the Marquis to uh, marry her. You know, like try to persuade him that it would be the right decision since they're both just the like. They're no different from each other. Now, um, in this episode, uh, Camille uh, pretty much has to figure out something and uh, she decides to go into town. And there's this beautiful shop that she always visits where a lot of the rich ladies are shopping for clothes and hats and wigs, you name it, they got it. Now, while she's there, on Danae, if you guys remember, on Danae is Valmont's stepmother. She's there with some other ladies and they're pretty much still gossiping about the engagement party and they're gossiping about Christine. Everyone's laughing. Now, when Camille walks in, on Danae is being very catty with Camille. And of course, Camille does not let that slide. So Andene does bring up how there's a masquerade ball that's taking place. Camille starts to inquire about it and Andene lets her know, well, in order for you to attend, you must have an invite. You know, you need an invitation. Not just anybody can get into this party. And she lets Andene know right away, baby, I am invited to this party. I am a plus one because I am the Marquis fiance. That shocks Andene. It pisses her off because if you guys remember, Andene was pretty much trying to get Camille to hook her up with the marquee. Like she was trying to be next in line to get um to get remarried and look at what happened. Camille beat her to it. So what started off as a good, nice friendship between the two ladies has now turned into um, enemies now. Now the owner of the shop pulls Camille away from them because she sees how they're being nasty and mean towards Camille. She decides to basically take Camille and show her around and also let her know, hey, Come into my back room. Let me show you some of the beautiful masks that some of the finest will be wearing at this masquerade ball. Now, while back there, Camille is basically inquiring, well, what type of mask will I be wearing? The owner lets her know, you'll be wearing the fox. So her mask looks just like a fox. Now, she starts to inquire, will Jacqueline be at this event? She tells her, yes, Jacqueline always attends the masquerade ball. She will be there with her husband, Henry. Now she starts to wonder, well, what type of mask will, will they be wearing? She lets her know that Jacqueline will be wearing the mask that it looks like a lamb. And then her husband will be wearing the mask of a wolf. His mask is a wolf, which is kind of weird that, you know, they put him in the mask of a wolf because think about it, a wolf in sheep's clothing, because Henry, even though he's a prestigious surgeon, um, he's not the best. You know, he is known for cheating on Jacqueline. Now, Camille knows uh, all of this information and that there's a ball taking place. If you guys remember, one of the obstacles 
she pretty much um, is in limbo with the marquee. The marquee, you know, agreed to marry her, but now he's not wanting to marry her. So now she got to go back home and convince this man to marry her to get back on the same accord so they can go to this ball so she can now fulfill her second obstacle, which is trying to take down Jacqueline. So that's what she does. She goes back home trying to entice the marquee. And what she does is she makes sure she looks good. She has on a beautiful corset, has her, has her chest all out. And she decides to basically ask the marquee, you know, how does my corset look? You know, should I make it a little bit tighter for the ball? And the marquee lets her know, you know, how are you going to the ball? It's by invite only. And she basically tells him, you know, you have an invitation. Why don't I be your plus one? They're pretty much talking and she they basically end up going to the ball. She convinces him to go to the ball. So that's one one obstacle down right there like that. He did not agree to marry her. He just agreed to get dressed up and just go to this ball. So everybody's dressed up. Even Victor is also um, riding along in the horse and carriage with them. She's going to be along for the festivities. Now, when they get there, Camille does spot Jacqueline getting out of the carriage. Victor notices this and starts to put two and two together and realizes that, are you only at this ball because Jacqueline's at this ball? Camille can't really lie. Like it says, it, it pretty much it shows on her face. And um, Victoria's like, you know what? I can be a part of this. Camille leaves the horse and carriage and attends the ball. Whereas Victor, she decides to go back to the mansion. She does not want to be a part of this ball. She does not want to be a part of the drama because she already knows Camille is stuck on trying to take down this woman. She's gotten to the point where she's turned mad about it. Now at the ball, not much really goes on within the first 10 minutes of the ball. We see her enter the ball. She does find the table with her name. She uh, allows someone to put on her mask and she's pretty much watching Jacqueline the whole time, watching her like a hawk, trying to figure out her next move, trying to figure out what to do now. Now, while that's taking place, now we're thinking Victoria's just going back to the mansion. She actually goes to pay a visit to Valmont. And um, Valmont pretty much does not want to see Victor. Victor's like, look, you, you got to go to this masquerade ball. Camille is there. He's like, look, me and Camille are over and done. Do not speak her name. I'm tired of her. And Victor's like, well, she's there to take down Jacqueline. Valmont stops to think for a moment. And eventually he does agree to go. He gets dressed up, goes to the ball. Now, Victor is not able to enter the, enter the ball. However, Valmont does go, he does get a mask, and he pretty much ends up finding Jacqueline. They're pretty much they're dancing and they're whispering to one another. They do kind of share a kiss on the hand. Jacqueline is excited to see Valmont, and you can tell that she has fallen for Valmont. Um, pretty much Valmont takes Jacqueline away to go to a secret place for them to talk, but they're not really talking. There's a lot of whispering, heavy breathing. Jacqueline is pretty much, she is in the moment. She is in love with Valmont. She's kissing all over him. Now, while they're in this hidden room, uh, the camera pretty much widens a little bit and we see that it's actually an orgy room. There are tons of other people. They're just having sex in this room. And Valmont starts to notice, like, uh, uh you know, I apologize. Let's just get out of this room. This is not where we need to be. And as they're trying to leave, Jacqueline pulls on him again, pulls him close to kiss her. Again, it's a lot of heavy breathing, passionate kisses until Valmont pretty much um, sits her down and tells her, you know, thou shalt not commit adultery. He pretty much throws the Bible at her, starts spitting out Bible verses. And basically tells her, you know, this is not you. You know, I need to get you out of this place. This is not where you need to be. You don't belong here. Now, as they are leaving, okay, Valmont, he picks up a mask. Now, the mask that he picks up is not even his mask. It's actually, um, the mask is the mask of a wolf. If you guys remember, the only person that's wearing that mask, the wolf mask, is Henry. 
And that's when I, uh, you got to start thinking, how did that mask end up there? That means that Henry at some point was in that orgy room with someone and that someone was not Jacqueline. OK, now also, too, as they are leaving, Jacqueline uh, had left her mask in the room. She never took it with her. She never put it back on her face. So that's going to come up later on. Um, I see in this um, in this series, because. Keep in mind that mask is still there and she's the only one that was wearing the mask of a lamb and might come back to haunt her. Now, Valmont does get her into a horse and carriage and Jacqueline rides off and proceeds to leave. Now, Valmont does go back in and he's pretty much, you know, like keep in mind he has on the wrong mask. He has on the mask of a wolf, which people are thinking is Henry when it's not. And Camille is thinking it's Henry. She's eyeing him, following Valmont. Valmont does leave out of the mansion and as he's walking, Camille is still eyeing him. She is watching and watching as she's creeping up on him. She ends up trying to uh, stab, um, trying to stab um, Valmont. And she's thinking that it's Henry. When uh, the mask comes off, she notices that it's Valmont. And Valmont pushes, um, not pushes her, pulls her into a wooded area. And he basically tells her, I need to know the truth. What really happened? Why are you so determined to destroy Jacqueline and her husband? Like what's going on? She finally has a flashback scene and tells him, I was innocent. I was taken into their home. I thought they were loving and kind until her husband, Henry, forced himself on her. Basically, Camille um, ended up pregnant from it. She did have a, a, a baby, but she fell asleep after after having given birth to a baby and the baby was gone. She was told that the baby died. I'm not too sure if the baby died because we don't see evidence of it. Um, I kind of I kind of want to think that maybe they took the baby and gave the baby to another family. But uh, Camille was told that the baby died and Jacqueline never believed a word of Camille. Camille tried to tell her that, hey, your husband forced himself on me. And she basically sided with her husband, kicked Camille out and left her for dead. So that was uh, the truth of what happened. Camille is crying. Valmont is consoling her. And um, Valmont just basically says, I will destroy them. I will destroy, um, especially Henry, I will destroy them. I will, you know, I will, I will kill Henry for you. And Camille is basically like, no, I don't want that. I just want them to suffer like I did. So they share a passionate, passionate kiss. And um, Valmont does eventually leave and leaves, it kind of leaves Camille behind, you know, thinking about what he said, that that loving moment that they shared. And um, she notices there is a woman crying. There's a woman crying off on the side. And who's this woman? This is the queen herself, Marie Antoinette. The queen herself is crying and she's coming to console this woman. And um, we know why she's crying. She's actually crying about Christine. If you guys remember that Christine and the queen had a love affair. She's crying and she lets the queen know this is not the end. Like you will fall in love again. You'll be loved. You know, it's not the end of the world. You know, dry your tears and put a smile on your face. Um, they embrace and eventually um, they're there. We hear the crowd in the background doing a countdown. The queen walks over and we see fireworks <laughs> taking place. So um, and at the end of this episode, uh, Camille returns home to find a letter from Victor. Victor has written her a letter basically saying goodbye. I can no longer be here. You're constantly lying. You're creating way too many enemies. And, you know, I thought we were friends and I'm not seeing us, you know, being friends. You're treating me, you know, you're being cruel towards me. Basically, Victoria lets her know, not only have I left, I've taken the letters. That breaks Camille's heart. <laughs> I've taken the letters. Don't try to find me because you won't find me. And I'm going to take these letters and I'm going to destroy these letters. Now, if you guys remember those letters, Camille has always been using them as leverage. She uses them as power, power over people to blackmail them. Now that Victoria's taken those letters, she really doesn't have nothing to stand on. She has nothing. All she has is gossip. She has no proof, no evidence, no nothing now. 
So as she's uh, trying to get her thoughts together, the Marquis walks in and she's about to basically come clean, basically tell him everything. And then the Marquis surprises her with a ring. He puts a ring on her finger and proposes, will you marry me? Now, that is the end of that episode. And gosh, there was so much drama, pettiness, cattiness, like, Ooh, it was a lot going on, a lot of kissing and sex. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on in this episode. But I am loving this. But unfortunately, I got to give you guys the news. So it's been reported. Dangerous Liaisons. This is pretty much the, the end of the season. So there's two more episodes to go. Um, at the beginning, they, they, had, they had renewed this episode for a second season already. It was announced on November the 1st of this year. Now, the show premiered November the 6th. The Stars Network, they pretty much was banking on this history piece. Like, oh my God, this show is going to be phenomenal. And it is. It's a really good TV series. The only problem is it's not a lot of people watching. Um, so they, um, after season one, this is pretty much it. Um, Stars is no longer renewing it for a, a second season. They pretty much reversed that decision. And right now the producers are pretty much just gonna shop around to another network to see if another network might pick up the, ser the series. So, so far it's good. Um, the only thing is like, you gotta have viewership. Like if nobody's watching, then a show can't last. You know, that's pretty much it. And when I say numbers, like they, it never hit a hundred thousand views. Like the first uh, premiere, it only showed 88,000 views, that's it. And once you got around Thanksgiving, I think the lowest was like 50,000 views. They never got over 100,000 views. So it just, they couldn't find the audience. And the second reason I think too, um, it's not really being mentioned, but the series started pretty slow. It wasn't a lot of its excitement in the beginning. You really, things didn't get good until episode four. And here it is, we're in episode six now. So but yeah, you know, you never know. The series might come back on another network, but just want to give you guys the news on that. And let me know what you guys think. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys for another review. Bye.